in light of a recent glut of false comparisons of men going their own way to feminists, when men go in their own way, then their actions in no way whatsoever resemble feminists. I think the meme of SADIF, which is an acronym for same as a feminist, must be properly addressed. Observe that when facts falter, or there is an inability to produce legitimate refutation of points brought to the fore, people will often result to insults and shaming language. We see this across the board, not just on YouTube. In short, when you can't win, scream, and make sure you scream something designed to insult for best results. Although no man going his own way to date has ever advocated for state-sponsored wealth confiscation, violence against women, or any of the other very common things we hear from the feminist camp, all the while making use of statistics, biologically attestable facts, and observable behavior, again, something feminists do not do, we continue to hear the boo phrase sedif. In fact, men go in their own way as a principle, and its very manifestation is a rejection of the state, urging men to go their own path, or as feminism urges women to seek power in collective estate structures. How does this, in any way, shape, or form, even remotely resemble feminism and its grab for power? Similarly, it is claimed that we are sedif because we paint women with too broad a brush, just as feminists do with men. Is that claim accurate? Certainly not. For one thing, and no feminist to my knowledge has ever produced evidence to support the claim that all men are rapists, or that more women are afflicted by violence than men. Their alleged evidence lies solely in the appeal to emotion and natural human tendencies to favor the female being over the male being. Conversely, men going on their own way have produced graphs, data, statistics, as well as theories that can be substantiated by and correlated with reality and factual observation. Take Barbarossa's latest video titled Traditional Relationships, Nothing But Business and a Bottom Line, in which he produces readily, readily attestable evidence suggesting that traditionalism is a defunct institution as soon as sufficient societal mechanization has taken place, citing several articles with statistical evidence of increased divorce in China and India, countries that have in recent years experienced a rapid increase in prosperity and mechanization. In response to this, most of the comments directed towards the video were simply variations of Sadiff. In not a single comment did we see someone actually refuting the points he was addressing. Again, nothing of what has been produced by men go in their own way resembles in the slightest those things claimed by the feminists, and in particular their methods. Additionally, a slightly different shaming meme that has surfaced is Sadim, or same as the Marxists. I was recently called a Marxist left-wing ideologue, all the mountains of the evidence to the contrary notwithstanding, and in numerous videos where I reject both the right and the left, and most recently in a video where I stress the importance of rejecting one-size-fits-all solutions for complex problems and the need to reject one-sided ideology, simultaneously encouraging independent thought and individual solutions to individual problems. Despite all of this, I am a commie. Now, I've come to the conclusion that this left is evil dogma is merely a relatively recent outcropping of something as old as civilization itself. Humans looking to place blame on others or on something, often in singular and uniform terms, looking for a sole source of the problems, as it were. This is basically looking for the devil, a practice of polarizing complex issues and affairs into simplistic terms of one side is right and the other is wrong, wherein the right side is flawless, has all the solutions, and the wrong side, see devil reference, is completely wrong. The source of all ills, and upon defeat of this wrong side, a new golden age will be ushered in. Much as in the Middle Ages, failure to harvest was often blamed on the devil, aided and abetted by a witch, and just about any other problem for that matter, uh, any deviation from a strict right-wing attitude will likewise be attributed to the devil. Only in this case, the devil is Marxism, even when, this, when said devil is not a Marxist at all, meaning anything that cannot be identified along the lines of social conservatism, right-wing thinking, will be characterized as left-wing ideology and or Marxism, independent of what it actually is. And since right-wing ideologues seem to believe incorrectly that feminism is a product of Marxism, this is where both Sadif and Sadif stem from. 
Put simply, if you don't agree with me, you're a feminist commie. Recent comments have also provided for ample evidence to suggest that men's interest in DNA propagation is an obsession. And so obsessed they are that they display outright hostility towards men who are not obsessed with DNA propagation. I'm going to read off some recent comments on my channel to prove the point. Uh, both of these comments uh, stem from the same gentleman. I quote, I've got, to, I've got to say you were pure poison to the movement, Stardust. Whenever the leading MRAs embraced you, I think that's the moment I lost interest in the MRM. For all this talk you did in this video about stopping misandry, <clears throat> I didn't hear one single suggestion. All I heard was you going on about some men wanting to view women. I still fail to see how it's any of your business. You got way too wrapped up in this men going their own way. MGTOW nonsense. Look how it Let's see how he looks at um, and going the right way. You're going your own way, all right, right off a cliff. In the next comment, he contradicts himself. He says, I do not look down on men going their own way at all. I just think it's wrong-headed. If a family is not what you guys want, I can understand that. I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. I don't understand myself how you can agree with something and then claim to understand it. Well, anyway. I don't feel, I do not feel superior to men going their own way because I want a woman in my life. Quite the contrary. I want to take pieces of it so I can stand on my own two feet in a modern relationship that has many challenges that our predecessors did not have to face. That's what I'm looking for." End quote. Now, it should be blatantly obvious to anyone that the gentleman making these comments is indeed hostile towards men going their own way. And that one of the reasons he is is because men going their own way quite simply do not endorse relationships or marriage with women. In no video, and I do mean none, have I off ever offered Ten Commandments style dictates to men, ordering them not to date or marry. I and others have simply stated that it is a very, very risky business indeed, and that is putting it mildly. And pointing out that the male obsession with DNA propagation is a liability in today's day and age, when he has no rights as a father whatsoever, and pointing out that patriarchy was a raw deal in the past is not tantamount to dictating to someone what he should do. You want to be with a woman? Fine. And you think it's, you think it's good to make the effort? That's also fine, by all means. But when you enter the minefield, and that is exactly what suggesting that men should, that men should date is, it's entering a minefield, and get blown to smithereens, do not complain that there there'd been no fair warning warning mind you do not order or dictate this obsession with dna replication has reached a fever pitch and it will only increase as time goes on the more men reject traditional roles uh, see my previous video on the bachelor tax the, the more they see value in themselves independent of self-sacrificial roles while, where self-immolation is regarded as the highest virtue for the sake of access to female reproductive resources the more we will hear this kind of rhetoric society is hostile to men who reject these roles. It is a fact. Another element of the hostility towards men going their own way is this obsession with posterity. People are quite concerned with what will happen 200 years hence. We will all long, be long dead. I have to ask myself why they are not more concerned with the inevitable transformation of our sun into a red dwarf in a few billion years, which will subsequently expand and consume Earth's orbit, ending the existence of Earth and all life on Earth. I have stated numerous times that men going on their own way is a solution to the present, and we all live in the present. And whilst I will be addressing the issues of solutions below, we cannot afford to worry about what the world will look like in 200 years when we are all dead, because we are beset by so many presence, uh, problems in the present. And once again, I am not dictating to men what they should do or be. You want to go down the traditional route? More power to you. Just be prepared for lots of mind dodging. I just don't think it's worth it. And I think advising men down this path is very dangerous, much more so than advising men to abstain from that path, where the danger is effectively zero. Mechanization has changed everything, and the age we live in is known as the information age, and with good reason. With the advent of the internet, information on virtually every subject is available at the click of a mouse. And this has far-reaching consequences on how people, especially young people, will gain access to information, what they may or may not look up to, etc. I say this because concern has been voiced as to what young boys should look up to and how they should evolve as men. 
they will inevitably be exposed to technology. First and foremost, the internet and the very existence of this technology creates a very different playing field uh, that of the traditional family unit. At the same time, societal mechanization, coupled by political uh, politicized feminism, has permanently altered what the family unit is and was. And whatever it used to be, it is no longer that which it was. That's the point. Regardless of how much, some, how, how much some of us or some men might pine away for the alleged glories of the past, in this information age, each person, but in particular a young person, and a young person will be born into a world of almost total mechanization, will be confronted by so many sources of information on so many subjects as to be possibly overwhelmed by it all. And because politicized feminism and mechanization have transformed the landscape of humanity to such a degree that regression, of barring destruction of civilization itself, is not possible, men going their own way have the opportunity via YouTube, blogs, and other media to reach out to young men and show them an alternative path, one they might not have otherwise known or considered as many of us, including myself, spent a great deal of our lives realizing something was wrong, poking around in the dark, without ever being able to put our fingers on it. The internet changed this. The source of tutelage and sources of inspiration will lie by default, not in the evaporating family unit, but in the information that so characterizes the information age. At the same time, this will perforce encourage independent thinking and free exchange of thought, leading to a new, further evolved man. Now, once again, this is not a proscription against men with families or men wanting families, as I said. If you wish to enter the minefield, do so, but do so in full knowledge that you will likely not leave the minefield alive, and in the best case scenario, you will be carrying around shrapnel in your ass for the rest of your life. The final point I wish to address is what I call the caged beast, which is here a, simply a metaphor for feminism as inherent to female nature. Now, common fantasy meme in both games and literature is the concept of the ancient caged evil, locked away and trapped for a set period of time and only by a means of great sacrifice on the part of certain people participating in a highly costly ritual, usually involving, involving loss of life and annihilation of the soul. The wards hold for a limited period of time usually a thousand years or so, upon which they weaken and break completely, bringing about either the necessity of performing the ritual again, or in some cases an attempt at the final destruction of the beast, ending the threat once and for all. Now you may ask me why I'm talking about this, and I can tell you I'm talking about this in reference to what some, uh, some traditionalists have actually conceded, at least in part, that patriarchy is there to keep the beast in check. However, uh, analogous to the magical, war, magical wards weakening, those wards have lost so much power as to render the reinitialization of, of, of the binding ritual worthless. This time, gentlemen, the beast has escaped, and you cannot capture it again. Feminism is now everywhere, and the patriarchy you so endorse could not and cannot contain it anymore. And where it did contain it, it only did so in a blood ritual exacting the souls and lives of the men who participated in it. Civilizational mechanization has forever changed this, and this is simply a fact. Accept it. There is no going back. Many of you have asked for solutions, so I'll offer one. Just one. You don't have to listen if you don't want to. You don't have to heed it if you don't want to. It's just an offer, a suggestion. If you do not wish to reinvent the wheel that broke off the cart the minute the road got bumpy, you must acknowledge that politicized feminism is so ingrained in our political systems and governments a conventional, quote-unquote, working within the system tactics will and do fail, as evidenced by the gentleman who made the comment on fighting the good fight as a father and losing. I will repeat that here, quote, There's much in this video I would like to comment on, but for now, let's limit it to father's rights. As someone who came to the MRM through dad's rights, fought the good fight, and lost anyway, I feel strongly that working with courts to augment and enforce dad's rights is the wrong approach. Instead, we should do better to encourage men to and absolve men of turning their backs uh, on their offspring, end quote. The system is rigged. It's rigged for you to lose, and you will lose. The very existence of organizations such as Fathers for Justice proves this. Trying to work within the system, changing laws and the like, will do nothing since society and the system uh, inherently favor the female over the male. 
It can be likened to trying to climb Mount Everest with no supplies and only a hiking stick. The best solution to the destruction of the beast of feminism will not be one involving a reestablishment of, of wards for the next few centuries and a blood right demanding male disposability. Instead, the system needs to be starved, one by one, bit by bit. <clears throat> the more men wake up and realize their predicament, the more this will become a real possibility, denying both the state and old traditionalist paradigms at the same time, awakening the minds of men of all ages, will begin the slow process of starving the beast of power. I see no other path forward, since asking the beast to play nice is somewhat akin to asking a starving hyena to not, uh, not to try to eat you. It just won't work. It can no longer be caged, and stopping it permanently must mean the denial of male resources and wealth, all the while enkindling in men the desire for personal freedom individual res uh, responsibility and individual sovereignty. This seems likely the best way forward. Not sentimental and obsessive adherence to failed models of the past. And again, this is not a dictate. But if you choose to play with fire, do expect to get burned. It's that simple. <laughs>